let's see how these trig equations get used. So we'll go through a few examples. Here we've got f of x equals 1 plus 3 cos x within a range of 0 to 2 pi. We want to sketch the graph of y equals f of x and find the minimum and maximum values of f of x. So thinking about what's happened to that graph, oh, then we're going to go on and solve for f of x equals 0. So for graphing it, first of all, we are multiplying by 3, which means our curve, our cos curve, is going to be three times bigger. And then the plus one means it's all going to get shifted up by one. Okay, so it's going to look like this, where it's going between four and minus two, and the middle of it will be at one, so it's been shifted up by one and stretched vertically by three. It's still going to have those uh, maximum and minimum points at pi, zero, and two pi. Okay, so the maximum is 4 when x equals 0 and 2 pi, and the minimum is minus 2 when x equals pi. Now solving for f of x equals 0 means we're looking for these points where it crosses the x-axis. So we can set our equation equal to 0 and solve from there. So now we're looking for cos x equals minus a third, so do a little sketch of that. We're looking for those values that give us minus a third. So on your calculator, make sure you're set to radians because our range is looking for 0 to 2 pi. We do inverse cos of minus third, we get 1.91. Then using the symmetry of the graph, we can get our second solution of 4.37. Okay, example number two. We've got 3 plus a sine 2x within a range of 0 to pi. We want to, we know that the maximum value of this function is 5. We want to find a and then sketch the graph. So since um, the maximum of sine can only be 1, um, then we have to do um, something that makes our maximum be 5. And that means doing three, lots, 3 plus 2 times 1. Since sine has to be 1, 3 is fixed as well, the a must be 2. So now it looks like this. We've had um, the graph be uh, stretched vertically by a factor of 2, shifted up um, by 3, and then the period of the, the 2x in there means our, our period uh, has been... Uh, changed as well. So this 2x means that it's got half the period of sine x, so it repeats twice as often, is a way of thinking of that. The 2 means it's twice uh, as big vertically, and the 3 means it's been shifted up by 3. So where our curve would have normally only done half as much of that within pi, it's done the full um, sine, sine wave that you're used to. Okay, example number three. We want to find the smallest positive value of theta for which sine theta equals minus 0 0.2 and tan theta is positive. So we're looking for solving this equation first of all, sine theta equals minus 0 0.2. So here are our solutions um, marked on the sine curve. And let me just take that back a step. So here's our sine curve with minus 0 0.2 and we would get those two points on there to consider first of all. Now if they don't work out we would go a little bit further and, and consider more but we'll try out those first two, it should be enough. So then we want to know where does um, tan theta stay positive. So here's our tan curve um, going through the x-axis at 0, 180 and 360. We want to match up where those solutions are with where tan is also positive. So it's this one here where we'll get that solution and our blue line is above the x-axis. You'll notice on the other one we've got the solution but the blue line is below the axis meaning that tan is negative. So if we do inverse sine of minus 0 0.2 on your calculator that will tell you minus 11.5 so that's still not quite the thing that we want. That's over there in the negatives. So if we then use the properties of the graph we can find the other one within the range that we do want. So that'll be 191.5, so you just find that by doing 180 plus 11.5. And then just do a little check at the end that it does fit the, the conditions that were given to you in the question. So sine of 191.5 is minus 0.2, uh, 
yeah, minus 0.2, so that works. And then tan of 191.5 is 0 0.204, which is positive, so that works as well.